Let the record reflect. We have reconvened with all members present. Please rise for the pledge, and I ask that you remain standing after the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Again, remain standing so we can take a moment to re remember some longtime Madison residents we lost over the past month. Uh, Lou Gaboro, Gaboro passed away on December 15th, age of 82. He um, was with his wife uh, Patricia at the time. Lou was born in Somerville, New Jersey in May of 1940, graduated from the high school, 58, where he was a catcher for the Somerville High School Pioneer Baseball Team. And he was a pioneer in other ways, being the first member of his extended family to attend and graduate from college. Following high school, Lou married his high school sweetheart, Pat, who graduated from Pennsylvania State, State University. And as um, Lou's career advanced, he continued to pursue his love of uh, learning, garnering a master's degree in biochemistry from Rutgers and MBA from Freddie Dickinson. And he always found time to give back as a scouting leader, a little league uh, baseball coach. He always kept the family at the center of his life. And after retiring uh, from the pharmaceutical uh, field, Lou continued to give back to his community as ESL tutor and a member of Madison's Volunteer Ambulance Corps. He was a big Yankee fan, Penn State and Nittany Lions, obviously, and Washington Commanders, survived by his lovely wife of 60 years, Pat, his sister, his children, Maureen and Michael, three grandchildren, and a great-granddaughter. And then Joseph Giro, lifelong Madison resident, passed away January 7th, age of 86, survived by his wife of 64 years, Francis, his sons, Joseph Jr. and Patrick, his four brothers, born in Summit, July of 36. He enlisted after high school, enlisted in the Army, proudly served the 11th Airborne Division. He was auxiliary patrolman in Madison and part of the Special Police Auxiliary Reserve in Chatham Township. Have a shooter and part of the Farm Park Pistol and Gun Club. He married the love of his life, Francis, in 1958, and they've known, had known each other for their entire lives, having grown up in Madison, playing together as children. He had his own tile company, J.C. Giro Tile Construction, which is now taken over by his son. And Giovanni Carcione, longtime Madison resident, died January 6, age of 82, survived by her daughter Sabrina, her son Joe, and two grandchildren, predeceased by her hus husband Filippo in 96. She was born in Palermo, Italy, settled in Madison in 1974, where they raised her family. She um, was a talented seamstress with uh, many clients. She was a longtime parishioner of St. Vincent Martyr. Mary J. DeAnthony, longtime Madison resident, passed away on January 1 after a long and valiant battle with cancer 80, at the age of 85. Survived by her husband of 58 years, Joseph, her children Kathleen, Amy, and, and Joseph, and six grandchildren. Born in Newark in May of 37, she was raised in Newark, Belleville, and Irvington with her two sisters. Married the love of her life, Joseph, on 1964, and they relocated to Madison to start their own family. Gregory O'Lear Sr. died on December 31st after a long illness, ages 74. The son of the late Stephen and Laura O'Lear, Greg was a middle child growing up in Chatham Township. He attended Valley Elder High School, where sophomore year he met Janice Oliveri. She sat behind him because the nun's favorite alphabetical seating. They had been together ever since, married in June of 1970, right after he graduated from St. Leo's College in Tampa. Long career in insurance and reinsurance and with Prudential and AIG, and when it came to home improvements, there was nothing that Greg couldn't do. He was survived by his wife Janice, children Gregory, Jeremy, and Madison, uh, Jerry and Jeremy of Madison, sorry, and his two grandsons, and then Donald uh, Golbicki, longtime Madison resident, passed away suddenly on Sunday, December 25th, Christmas Day, 69 years old. He survived by his uh, wife of 45 years, Karen, one son, Matthew, two, two daughters, Sandra and Suzanne, Susan, and four grandchildren. Born in uh, July of 53 in Newark, attended St. Vincent Martyr School in my brother's class, and St. Benedict's Prep. He was a track and field athlete achieving long jump record that took de decades to break. He was inducted to, into their Hall of Fame. 
We enter William, William and Mary College at, on two year, uh, for two years on a track scholarship before coming back to Fairleigh Dickinson where he graduated top of his class with a Bachelor of Science degree in Business Administration. A long career at Prudential. So let's take a moment to remember Luca Boro, Joe Giro, Giovanni Carcione, Mary D'Anthony, Greg O'Lear, and Don Goldbucky. And now let's pass our thoughts on to the families and friends that they leave behind. Thank you. A motion for the executive minutes of December 12, 2022. So moved. Second. Ready to discuss. All in favor? Aye. 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 And a motion for the regular minutes of December 12, 2022. So moved. Second. Any discussion or corrections? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Welcome all. Apologize for our uh, slightly late start. We, today was a picture day in school, so we were uh, getting our <laughs> annual uh, council pictures done right before the meeting and uh, getting the right filter for my face took a little bit too long, so apologize. Um, but uh, before I get to my official uh, greetings, I want to say happy birthday to Bob Landergan. Mm -hmm. Celebrate a birthday. Aw, happy yeah, birthday. Bob. And uh, Happy New Year and welcome to uh, everyone to our first regular meeting of the year after a reorganization meeting this past Friday. And if I don't say so myself, I think it was a great meeting as we uh, welcomed Rachel to her second term and Tom to his first term on the council. And as I say, now the, now the fun begins. Um, and <coughs> and to reinforce, I, I, I do go to quite a few um, uh, reorganization meetings and um, not to brag but I think we do it the it was an great. incredible meeting and it just doesn't happen without the work of a lot of people behind the scenes especially right next to me Liz Os Osborne our clerk, clerk who uh, while most of you are relaxing over the uh, Christmas New Year's holiday she is frantically getting ready getting resolutions prepared going through all my appointments that I need to make sure I make and uh, and all that along with uh, arranging everything to happen during the reorganization meeting. And then there's our communications director, Michael Plessier, with the logistics and uh, assistant, uh, executive assistant Kathy Notine with uh, all the meeting co coordination. So it's a uh, quite a bit of work that goes into making that uh, meeting a, a big success. And probably our biggest star uh, was Abby Teagan, eighth grader, who uh, volunteered to sing the national anthem. Uh, and she, if you were here, you know she did an incredible job. And if you haven't had a chance, uh, please uh, click on the link and uh, watch it. She, uh, we're, we're trying to negotiate a five-year deal until she goes off to <laughs> <laughs> um, And since our last meeting, we uh, wrapped up another great holiday season in Madison. Our tree is still up, which I love as a walk from uh, my home to here and see it uh, all lit up. Downtown looked amazing and it was a constant buzz of, of the shoppers. Christmas Eve, I have a tradition to go around and say hello to the shopkeepers um, that are, are still in the shop. And almost to a um, team, it was consistent. That was a great holiday season for shopping in Madison. They all greatly appreciated their work. And uh, moving on to our employee of the month. Um, our second day of the month was a holiday, but not for our employee of the month, Fire Chief Lou DeRosa. There was a large-scale phone service outage, which is not a good thing for um, borough operations. Um, but rest assured, 911 was working fine. Uh, all the borough lines were, uh, including the police department, though, were, were down. Uh, this relates to a global issue with Monmouth Telecom. Chief Lou came into work that day to troubleshoot with the uh, service provider, and thanks. Thanks to his efforts, full service was restored within a few hours. And now I'm going to get the microphone set up, which we have a special guest here, State Senator Anthony Bucco. As, my, as I mentioned, reorganization meeting, the end of this year, we are shifting from LD27 to LD25, and, and 
to the uh, is our state center at LD25. So let me hand off the microphone and can I have representatives of the Historical Society please step forward. Thank you, Mayor. Come on down here. Um, just let me say this, that um, I, I learned that the Historical Society was going to be celebrating 100 years on November 13th. And um, when I heard that and I looked around Madison, I thought how appropriate um, it would be for me to recognize them because you don't have to look any further than the room that we are in today to realize uh, the significance of the history uh, here in Madison. And uh, as the mayor said, Madison will become uh, hopefully my new district uh, next year. And um, I've taken some time to get to know Madison and um, go to a number of events and be around town. And uh, I can't tell you what a magnificent uh, municipality that it is, and I will admit that I didn't spend a lot of time here prior uh, to my change in the district. But I am certainly glad for the change, and I am glad that I've had an opportunity uh, to come here and witness the beauty and the history that Madison uh, has. And as I was going through the history of uh, the Historical Society, I realized that it was organized in an effort to save Bottle Hill Tavern. And I'm kind of glad for that because I had my grandchildren and my family over to see Santa uh, right before Christmas. And uh, Bottle Hill Tavern is where I took them for lunch uh, afterwards. <laughs> well, listen, I, I, I knew I was in the right place because when I was leaving, the mayor was right there. So, um, so but, um, but seriously... Uh, history is so important uh, to a municipality. If we don't work to preserve it and we don't learn about the history, um, you lose so much. Uh, just think of the Mars Canal and what we've lost over the years because of development, because it wasn't preserved, and now we're fighting to try to get it back. But, but here, you've had an active 100 years, and, um, and I'm honored to be here tonight to celebrate that and to celebrate you and your members for all that you've done to recognize the history here, preserve it, and teach it to the younger folks so they have a sense of pride of, of being a Madison resident. And I understand, Mayor, uh, in the spirit of history tonight, you're going to be making a big announcement about uh, President Lincoln there. And I'm not, I don't want to steal your thunder, but um, I just think uh, that's a magnificent thing for your for your borough, and um, and it just goes to show you how important our history is, and how well Madison has worked to preserve it, and that's um, and that's a big thank you to the society for all that you've done to do that. So thank you. Tonight I have a joint Senate and Assembly resolution that was introduced on the floor of the Senate by me and on the floor of the assembly by my uh, running mates, Assemblyman Bergen, Assemblywoman Dunn, and Assemblyman Barranco, and, um, and passed unanimously in both houses. You should be pretty proud of that. Not a lot of stuff passes unanimously. <laughs> so uh, you're obviously doing something right. Keep up the great work. Uh, all of your efforts show here and, and around the borough. Thank you and congratulations. On behalf of the trustees of the society and our membership, we'd like to thank you very much. Thank you and the state of New Jersey for this honor. It's our, it's our honor, believe me. Now, can we get a picture? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, okay. Thank you, thank you.
All right, we will uh, move on to reports from committees. Community Affairs, Council President Hoover. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, this will be a very short presentation from the Downtown Development Commission and the Director of Business Development. The, uh, the DDC will hold its annual reorganization meeting on Thursday, January 26th at 7.15 p.m. in the Hartley Dodge Memorial Building, committee room, which is right next door. The public is cordially invited to attend. From the Chamber of Commerce, the Madison Area Chamber of Commerce will create a Madopoly game for Madison. Space will be offered to chamber members first and then open to non-members. The chamber plans to produce 500 games for sale to the community. From the Madison Community Arts Center, this is a very important, this is a very important uh, item. Uh, the Madison Community Madison Arts and Cultural Alliance will hold an event of, on January 22nd with music by Jerry Vezza, Grover Campbell, and Bryn Stanley. Details are available at the MACA website. We encourage all of you to, account, to attend. Thank you. And by the way, there will be wine, beer, and hors d'oeuvres served. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. And Finance and Borough Clerk, Ms. Cohen. I'll make up for John's short report, <laughs> very long report. Um, an important reminder for the, from the tax department, the first quarter property taxes are due February 1st. I'm happy to announce that in 2022, we collected over 99% of the property taxes. Special thanks to Chrissy and Hattie and the tax collection department for doing such a great job under such challenging conditions. From accounts payable, the Edmonds budget and accounts payable system is currently closed as we finalize our year-end accounting. This system will be rolled over and opened by the end of the week. Because of this, the council does not have any, um, not does not have to approve any vouchers this evening. All right, on to the budget. Tonight we will continue our work on the 2023 budget. Back in December, we very briefly discussed the proposed five-year capital plan. This important document is available on Rosenet if anyone would like to review it. We also passed a temporary budget at the reorganization meeting, which is standard practice amongst all New Jersey municipalities. The reason we pass a temporary budget is so the newly elected officials like Councilman Harlem Pudis can be involved in the budget process. This evening, we will continue our discussion of the five-year capital plan. We will also review the Open Space, Recreation, and Historic Preservation Trust Fund, including last year's activity. The budget process revolves around the 2014 strategic planning guidelines. We continue to be guided by this important document and the work of Ben Wolkowitz. The budget process began back in the summer when administration started developing the capital and operating budgets with the department heads. Over six council meetings, uh, the governing body will discuss open space, capital, utilities, the municipal budget, and the department operating budgets. As a reminder, we have three budgets that we vote on and approve, the water utility budget, the electric utility budget, and the current fund or main municipal budget. It is very transparent, open process, and voting on the budget is one of the most important actions the council takes. If you have any questions at any point, you uh, can go to Rosenet and visit the page for annual budget process. The remaining budget schedule is as follows. I'm going to go through the whole schedule this time, and then at each meeting, I'll just announce what we're doing at the next. January 23rd, we will have the presentations from the Electric and Public Works Department heads. We will review all the utility budgets and utility fund balance. February 13th, we plan on having a discussion on the municipal budget and municipal fund balance. February 27th, we will have the department head presentations. March 13th, we will have a second discussion on the draft budget, strategic planning guidelines, and alternate budget format will also be presented. If there is consensus, we will authorize administration to draft the official state budget document. On March 27th, we will have our final budget discussion and hope to introduce the official state budget. We need to introduce the document by this meeting so we can stay within the state statutes and budget rules. On April 24th, after the minimum 28-day period, Council will hold a hearing and hopefully adopt the budget. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. And now on to... Uh, let me get my order here right. Sorry. Uh, public, public Works and Engineering, Ms. Ehrlich. New year, new seats, same liaison. <laughs> so the engineering department reports uh, that for our 2023 road improvement program, a grant award of 20, 000, sorry, $200,000 was received from the New Jersey Department of Transportation for resurfacing portions of Woodland Road, Garfield Road, and Myrtle Ave. At the Madison Public Library, the roof replacement project is making good progress. It's expected to be completed by April. 
which is also the approximate schedule for receiving bids for the interior renovation project at the library. The Green Avenue pedestrian improvements are anticipated to be constructed this spring and summer. And tonight we will vote to appropriate construction funds for the new pickleball, pickleball basketball court as well as the reconstruction of Cook Avenue parking lot. We have those ordinances on the agenda. The borough engineer has prepared revised plans for circulation to the green team stakeholders following last fall's uh, discussion of incorporating environmental comments into the process ahead of the bidding, especially regarding the multi-use courts at the MRC. Revised plans and estimates are also in the works for the Dodge Field Accessible Playground Project. And for the uh, reconstruction of Waverly Place, concept layouts have been provided by the engineering consultant firm with some prospective renderings due later this month. The Department of Public Works is pleased to have been able to open the ice rink in December, and it was used quite a bit that month during the colder days. And curbside Christmas tree pickup continues around town until the end of January. All trees are chipped, and the wood chips are used locally by the DPW where needed. That's all for Engineering Public Works. Thank you very much. And utilities, Mr. Landrigan. Thank you, Mayor. From the Water Department, in regards to the ice skating rink, uh, it took 325,000 gallons of water to fill the Rosedale Avenue skating rink, and God willing, it get cold enough so we could, they could skate again. Uh, on December 29th, the department responded to a six-inch water main break near 25 Hillview Avenue. The break was caused by ground movement and poor underlayment. Uh, the department also repaired one of the water main valves that was used to shut down the water at the same time. The water department responded to 1,163 markout requests in 2022 from the New Jersey, uh, from the BPU New Jersey, one call 811 call before you dig a uh, phone line. From the electric department, on December 23rd at 3.15 p.m., the electric department was called out to cut down a large tree that had fallen on a pole during the windstorm. Also on that same day, the department was called to Cook Avenue near the intersection with Ridgedale Avenue. Another tree had been blown down in the storm and had taken out two utility poles. On January 4th, the crew worked on repairing a broken transformer at the James Park substation. They had to replace a broken part to get the transformer back in service. And finally, on January 4th, the other electric department crew worked with the contractors at 16 Waverly Place to assist in repairing their broken underground conduit. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Thank you Mayor. Madison Police Department's new electric parking and new electric parking enforcement vehicle is now uh, pushed into service. The vehicle was recently outfitted with all necessary equipment and has been on patrol since last month. The vehicle, which is lettered to reflect its fully electric concept, can be seen throughout Madison performing parking enforcement duties. Well, the car doesn't, but Cindy does a great job while driving the car. Uh, police department patrol vehicles have recently uh, received uh, radio install upgrades over the past several weeks. These upgrades are necessary to prepare for uh, the transition to the new uh, Madison Public Safety radio system that is forthcoming. All Madison Police Department end of the year reports are currently being completed in order to be in compliance with the Morris County Prosecutor's Office directives. Currently, the use of force and vehicular pursuit end of year reports have been completed and submitted. In addition to these reports, the annual evidence room uh, audit has also been completed. And from the fire department, during the month of December, the fire department responded to 74 fire related incidents and 55 medical calls for a total of 129 calls for the month. Two department drills were also held. 42 fire prevention inspections were conducted and 21 smoke carbon monoxide resale cer certificates were issued. Our new engine number three was, uh, which was, was brought to the dealer for warranty work. She is back after spending two weeks at the dealer. Madison's ladder truck will be out of service for approximately three to four weeks while repairs are being made on her motor. The Chatham Fire Department will be covering Madison with their ladder truck during this time. And lastly, three recently appointed volunteer firefighters will be starting their Firefighter One course at the Morris County Fire Academy starting in February. And as always, volunteer firefighters are needed. 
You can go to www.madisonfd.com for more information on requirements and how to join. That's all for tonight, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. And health, Mr. Alan Putis. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, we want to remind everybody that our previous uh, health officer, Mike Fitzpatrick, after multiple years, uh, 25 years, Mayor? At least. I don't know, at least that many. Has <laughs> well, retired? Well, well, many years, many, many, yeah. many years. And uh, the uh, new replacement officer is uh, Sarah Perriment. Her office is out of Bloomfield, but she's going to be covering Madison. So the report we have for this uh, meeting, Mayor, is uh, communicable diseases first. Morris County's COVID activity level is high. Influenza activity across the state is high and is the most active influenza season in the past five years. Respiratory infections have been particularly active this year, though it seems that the RSV and influ influenza are subsiding now a bit. COVID infections are being driven by the XBB.1.5 variant that is highly transmissible. So the bivalent COVID-19 booster and season influenza vaccinations are proven to reduce hospitalizations, severe disease, and death. It's not too late to get your booster. These shots are available for free at the Health Department in Madison in the Hartley Dodge Memorial Building. Uh, environmental, uh, the retail food establishment licenses are due to the Health Department by, the, by January 17th. Uh, on December 22nd, a cat that was surrendered anonymously to St. Hubert's subsequently tested positive for rabies. So despite putting out information publicly, the man who surrendered the cat has not come forward. This is a problem that we have to prevent. Uh, residents with cats or dogs are reminded that they must be licensed each year with the health department. The applications are due by January 31st. Renewals were sent via email in December to those who already have licenses. Any new people can log on to the SDL portal to renew or get new licenses. The health department will also be conducting an animal census this year to ensure that all cats and dogs in the borough are appropriately licensed. Nursing. Nursing and health education are working together on blood pressure screenings in the community, including for borough employees. Health education. Our health education team provided the Don't Get Vaped In program to Madison Middle School in November, and they would like us to come back again in 2023. Youth mental health first aid trainings are also ongoing. That's it, Mayor. Thank you. And now on to communications and petitions. Uh, yes, Mayor. The council received a letter dated December the 15th from attorney Paul Mandel representing the Madison Resident Coalition asking the mayor and council not to vote on any um, marijuana cannabis dispensaries for 10 years. Also an email dated <clears throat> December the 21st from resident David Steckety regarding initiating an anti-idling program in the borough. Uh, we also received uh, 58 emails um, requesting mayor and council to rescind the cannabis legislation and four emails support, um, asking the mayor and council to um, or opposing the repeal of those ordinances. That's communications. Thank you. And now we're on to our first of two invitations for public comment. This one is limited to our three um, agenda discussion items and our resolutions. If you want to comment on um, anything else, including ordinances that are here for introduction, including the ordinances rescinding um, the dispensary ordinances, you must wait till our second one. So these are the uh, items you can comment on now. The uh, Lincoln Portrait Presentation by the HDM uh, trustees, the Open Space Recreation Historic Preservation Fund update, and the five-year capital plan. And here are the resolutions you may comment on, and these will also be, all be part of the consent agenda, so you'll understand what's in it when we get to that. Resolution 37, approving the interview process to promulgate a probationary firefighter hiring list. Uh, resolution 38, is a shared service ag agreement with Chatham to provide IT services. We're the provider. Uh, resolution 39 is supporting sustainable land use pledge. This was done in uh, 2010 and 2016. Uh, resolution 40 is authorized the placement of clothing textile donation bin and volunteer ambulance corps parking lot. Resolution 41 is enabling resolution for 
our MRC um, Green Acres application. We've been receiving $500,000 on an annual basis. Uh, resolution 42 is rescinding Resolution 105, 2022, which awarded a contract to Bayer Ford for purchase of a 2022 Ford uh, 450 dump truck. Um, and that is no longer available, so that has been res rescinded. Resolution 43 is authorizing purchase of electric department vehicle under a New Jersey state contract, and this is not to exceed $83,000 and uh, 50 cents. Resolution 44 is authorizing contract for diesel fuel through Morris County Co-op, not to exceed 60,000. Resolution 45 is gasoline contract to the co-op, not to exceed 150,000. Resolution 46 is awarding contract through co-op for rock salt, not to ex exceed $120,000. Uh, Resolution 47 is setting a grace period for pilot agreements. This is so uh, similar to what we do for uh, what is regulated by the state for uh, property tax. Uh, Resolution 48 authorizing uh, budget transfers. And these are um, from areas that have been overspent with legal services for 30,000 coming from health insurance, public grounds, uh, 30,000 uh, come also coming from health insurance, shade tree management professional service of 10,000 also coming from health insurance. Uh, resolution um, 49 is shared service agreement with the Senior Center of Chathams this is renewing the uh, current agreement we have. And resolution 50 is appointing Michael Plessier to the position of communications director, which is a role he pretty much has been serving for quite a while. So you may comment on those resolutions or the three agenda items. If you want to comment on any of those, step up to the lectern. You state your name and address, write the same on the clipboard, state the agenda item or resolution you're going to speak on, and try to keep your comments to three minutes. But we give you a one-minute grace. Anyone wishing to comment on those items? Seeing none, I close this part of the meeting, and we move on to our agenda discussions. Uh, Lincoln Portrait. We have our HDM uh, Hartley Dodge Memorial Trustees out in the hall and McCowett. Welcome, Anne, Mike, Hello. And John. Happy New Year, everyone. Happy New Year. Good evening, everyone. I'm Anne McCowan, and I'm here representing the Hartley Dodge Foundation. Uh, for those who don't know, it was established in 1935 by Geraldine Rockefeller Dodge. She set it up to support the building at the same time she deeded the building over to the borough. Our mission, and I'll read it here, is to monitor the architectural and historic integrity of the building and manage the art collection which we own and steward our endowment to advance those purposes. So we work closely with the borough on many things. Um, I'd just like to introduce some of our, my fellow board members, John Forte, John Egan and Mike Ranger. Uh, we have a couple more who are not here tonight, but to put faces to the board, we wanted to do that. In terms of background on the Hartley Dodge uh, art collection, uh, most of the artwork was installed in the 1940s by Geraldine. But like anything else, it needs to be maintained. So after years um, of inattention, uh, the Hartley Dodge Board uh, prioritized uh, looking at the art collection. Uh, we did con condition assessments uh, about five or six years ago uh, under Janet Foster's leadership, and that helped us prioritize the restoration of uh, the pieces that we have in the collection. The first was the Lincoln in its frame, and then next, uh, that hurt happened during COVID, 
And next was uh, George and Martha Washington, whom you can see up there, who went out over the last year and came back here in November. Uh, we did not have much information or, or records on the pieces in the collection, so we've been doing our own digging uh, to find more about the provenance and histories of the pieces that we have. But turning to Lincoln Portrait, beginning in 2001, after COVID, we began receiving some inquiries to loan the portrait. So we set up criteria to evaluate some of those inquiries, which included the quality of the institution, the programming around it, um, what its audience and, and reach was, um, and uh, some other factors as well. Uh, the clear winner was the National Portrait Gallery. Um, it is part of the Smithsonian Institution. I'm sure you're all familiar with it and located in Washington, D.C. What they proposed to us was that the Lincoln would hang in the American President's Exhibition, which is really the hallmark um, of the National Portrait Gallery. It has portraits of every president and most of the first ladies as well. It is going to temporarily replace a posthumous portrait that was done by uh, an artist by the name of Healy. Um, it, when you walk into the portrait gallery, it goes in order of, um, of when the president serves. So you walk in, you see the iconic portrait by Gilbert Stewart of George Washington. It's huge. You know it. Um, and then along the sides are uh, presidents 2 through 15. And then you walk behind uh, the Lansdowne portrait, and that is where our Abraham Lincoln is going to hang instead of the Healy. The very cool thing about that is that these two paintings hung next to each other in the main gallery of the Centennial Exhibition in Philadelphia in 1876. So this is the first time that we know that they are going to be back together again for a little while. As we looked at the National Portrait Gallery, our board thought it was a really great fit. First is their mission, which is to tell the story of America by portraying the people who shape the nation's history, development, and culture. It's supported by our national government, and it's located in D.C. It's visited by two million people a year, and a good portion of those are kids. Admission is free, and it's open seven days a week around the year, except for Christmas. The National Portrait Gallery has committed to making this um, a big deal. Um, it's going to be surrounded by all kinds of online and in-person programming that's oriented towards the everyday person, students, educators, historians, and it begins President's Day weekend. Uh, the Presidential Family Fun Day is going to take place on February 18th, um, and programming will continue throughout the loan. Other thoughts that we had were for a period of time to allow a wide audience to see the Lincoln versus a few people seeing it in a room here. Um, and by the way, the National Portrait Gallery didn't actually exist till the mid-1960s. It was started in 1962, but didn't open its doors till 68. Through our research, we've learned that the portrait was in the public eye, um, but all of that was over a century ago. As I said, it's hung in the Centennial uh, in 1876. It hung in the Capitol Building in various places. And twice, Congress introduced bills to acquire it, but democracy being what it is, didn't quite happen. Um, so what about Madison? We are not going to leave a blank wall. Very high quality reproductions of both the painting and the frame will be hanging the entire time of the loan. The Borough of Madison will be recognized through labeling. Uh, I have the inscription here. Credit Abraham Lincoln, Willem Frederick Carell Travers, Oil on Canvas, 1865. On loan from the Hartley Dodge Foundation and courtesy of the citizens of the Borough of Madison, New Jersey. In addition, there'll be QR codes and things like that that you can scan to, um, to hook up to the Smithsonian's information. And I would say any, any groups from Madison, school groups, whatever they may be, will be welcomed at the National Portrait Gallery. So I think there are a lot of opportunities for Madison residents to maintain the connection with it. So details on the plan. Uh, the five-year loan begins this month. 
and the painting will return to Madison in December of 2027. Uh, just so you know, the big unveiling will take place in February on February, yeah, sorry, on February 10th of next month. We have no plans to sell the portrait, but we've gone on record that it will not be sold during the period of loan plus two years after that without consultation with the borough. <coughs> the other pieces here in the room will not be lent while Lincoln is in DC, and we have signed a memorandum of understanding that covers those details. So this loan of the Lincoln portrait to the National Portrait Gallery is really exciting. It'll be an interesting and engaging experience, and I think we should all feel very proud. Thank you, Anne. As we have discussed moving up to here, this is quite a, you know, um, it's, you know, a humbling thing to sit right here, meeting after meeting, and to look at that portrait and to understand the, the history behind it. And it is very special to Madison, but this is an opportunity to share it with the world. So uh, we are certainly uh, very excited about this opportunity and to see it in the Smithsonian and the National Portrait Gallery. Other comments or questions from the council? Uh, Bob? It was pointed out to me that in the background of that portrait, um, there are other little pieces that you may want to see. Just don't focus on Lincoln. You'll see George Washington and some other things. Uh, take a look at those when you get a chance, because that's really almost like a miniature history lesson right there. That is exactly true there. Uh, and if you can go back to the mic so we can record this. Thank you. Sure. Um, you, it's great of you to point that out. Um, everybody should take a look. There um, is the 13th Amendment. There's the uh, unshackled slave. As you said, it's a history lesson. Yeah. And the great thing that the Smithsonian's going to do is dissect it and, and uh, take apart all those pieces and uh, be able to uh, convey them. Thank you. Cool. Any other questions or comments from the council? Thank you, and uh, just to, to reinforce, not only uh, is this a great opportunity, but the, the partnership with um, the Hartley Dodge trustees is so important. Anyone that owns a, an older home, as we have the uh, Historical Society, and they've, they've honored quite a few uh, you know, homes that have been restored. This is like an historic home, and without a lot of uh, care and, um, and dollar support, we would not be able to maintain it. Um, it's, the best town hall in the country, but it, it comes with a major responsibility. So thank you for the partnership. All right. Thank you very much. Now we'll move on to Open Space Recreation Historic Preservation Update. Our CFO, Jim Burnett. And he will flow right into the five-year capital plan, which was presented uh, back in December, but uh, just some minor tweaks in there. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, reports have been given to Council. They'll be available online, and hopefully Michael can get them posted up on the screen here. Uh, the Open Space Trust Fund report uh, has been given to Council a little more detail than we've done in the past. Um, a lot of behind-the-scenes changes in the way we're managing this. Uh, it's exciting for like an accountant guy, but I'm not going to bother you with it, except that um, uh, it, it's, going, it's just allowing us to track projects more. Um, preference is always to have either resolution or ordinance codifying any appropriation that comes out of it. Uh, bottom line is the, the balance at the beginning of the year and the balance at the end of the year are about the same. We did use um, uh, funds that were uh, previously given to the borough as a, a restricted gift for um, environmental or aquifer recharge that was uh, used for the Memorial Park Trail project. Um, and there are a number of uh, appropriations on there. Everybody says, what's the $2 for the New Jersey economic development? Why is that on there? Um, they actually gave us funds, and then they realized the three grants that they gave us were each 89 cents more than they should have, and they forced us to cut three separate checks for 89 cents back to them. So I, I wanted that. to put that on there just because I just wanted to say that. So um, anyway, uh, obviously, um, the MRC debt payment um, continues continues. It's the top uh, appropriation of $306,000. That will be uh, similar for the upcoming year. Um, we have funds from Green Acres, thanks to 
uh, our uh, current delegation and hopefully our future delegation will be able to get us additional Green Acres funds that uh, pay for a portion of uh, the land portion. So if you see up on the revenue side, $145,000 in the third line um, as uh, appropriation, that's previous uh, Green Acres grant funds that have come in. We put it in the coffee can, now we're pulling it out to pay off a chunk of that uh, MRC debt. So we're only paying about $150,000, $160,000 um, that we're paying from tax dollars out of, uh, for, the, for the MRC debt. And that's coming from the open space tax dollars. Tax levy is about $647,000. That's not going to change much in the upcoming year. Um, one thing of note, field rental and user fees. Um, I put a little uh, note at the very bottom of the report um, that they're the highest they've been in a number of years. We obviously had a pandemic low in 2020, uh, but um, in 2021 they bounced back. In 2022 they're the highest ever at $112,000. All of those funds go into the reserve for uh, skimming. So you'll see field rental and user fees as an inflow, and you actually see it as an outflow. So think of it going inflow, outflow and the outflow really just brings it down here to the bottom to this um, dollar amount we're up to over six hundred thousand dollars in funds set aside for the for the turf reskinning we did have the company come in recently and the turf is in pretty good shape so hopefully we can get a number of more years out of it and keep bringing in a hundred thousand dollars or more a year and be pretty close to uh, break even and, and not have to dip into any coffers to reskin that so um, that's pretty much it with that. I will come to council at some point. We have about six or seven appropriations that are out there um, that are in open space. And as the projects come due, I want to treat them similar to capital where you guys actually, I bring a resolution to you guys and you guys formally cancel it. If this project is done, whether it's a conservation management plan or some other project is completed, um, the trail that we recently put there at the MRC, there's additional funds. We can cancel that and recapture those funds back into the open space trust funds. You'll see those. Any questions on the open space report? Uh, Deb? I'm going to kind of put you on the spot. So. Oh, boy. I hope I have the answer. <laughs> The Morris County grant for the Masonic Lodge, is that still being used in that capacity? Um, yes. I mean, we're still obviously trying to figure out exactly what's going on with that, but but we've, um, you know, used it to um, submit, you know, the project for um, drawings and for additional information in the hopes that we have the opportunity to work with the Masons to renovate that space. And we have a lease agreement for the use of the space. Great, thank you. Tom? Yes, Mayor, I have a question, Jim. So what's the what's the term left on the MRC debt payment? Bond? You have tanked up your head? Sorry, Jim. <laughs> um, I, I, I should have yeah. had that, and that's that's a definitely a good question to ask. I don't have it in front of me here. Um, the turf has about uh, six years to go, and I'll get to you the answer tomorrow. I should have had that ah, in my um, back pocket. Well, I, I mean, really six years, we'll um, have three But the land, the land goes for another um, another seven years beyond that I believe so I'll get you the information oh, okay and I apologize so that's a combination the 306,000 is for both the land and for the turf that's correct yes but once the turf portion is done we still have maybe half of that or something correct that. yes right right so another question I had too uh, when we're when we were doing the uh, the new playground or is part, part of that's gonna be paid for by a grant so should that be in the inflows or was that already recorded somewhere else um, I remember that at one of the meetings. Yeah, that was a that was a previous inflow. I believe. When did that it come was, in? But that's a, that's going to be a 2022 yep. or 2020. Exactly. 2023. Exactly. So that'll be part of um, that project, and then we're going to probably double talk about it at the next meeting. Have to appropriate a little more money for that project. Oh, okay. That's your biggest line item. So it's good if you offset it a little bit. I don't. I thought the grant was about one hundred fifty thousand dollars, but I'm. Not Sure. You it was, that. but I'm going to go. I'm going to do a whole playground presentation. Another one uh, in two weeks. Yep. Talk about the sandbox again. No. <laughs> right. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? All right. We'll sh shift to uh, five-year capital plan. Uh, so this is more for an informational purposes. We talked about this briefly at the last council meeting. Uh, it's been adjusted to move Waverly Place, which is on page two, Michael, from the uh, 
um, for, it's on the road reconstruction uh, page, Michael, from uh, 2023 to 2024, and that really um, kind of sets us up for uh, a manageable amount of general capital in 2023, $3.5 million. A lot of it is being appropriated tonight in the various ordinances. Uh, I, I am comfortable with that. We um, will have to look at some of these, um, depending on the budget situation and what council's appetite is for certain things, but we may have to look at some of these expenditures and look to uh, postpone them if for some reason, um, uh, you know, the, during our budget process, there, there's a change. But right now, I think we have no problem funding this. The department heads will be in front of you um, in February. Uh, Ken and uh, Bob Vogel and Jim Matina will be here at the next council meeting to discuss utilities, which is a big part of this, and public works. Uh, but then the other department heads, uh, Chief DeRosa, Chief Misha, um, and the library will be here to talk about their requested appropriations. As a reminder, and I believe as uh, Councilwoman Cohen had said this evening and in, in meetings past, this is just a spending plan. Nothing happens until you pass an ordinance like what you're doing this evening. So this is a guideline, uh, a primer of where we think the expenses will be. Lots of things change. Sometimes you'll see a capital ordinance that we advance to you. Like this evening, there is a $21,000 ordinance for a device that the fire department will have that will automatically do CPR on someone. It gets strapped on them and can automatically continue to apply CPR to someone while they're being moved. Um, makes it easier instead of having to do hand compressions. That wasn't on our five-year capital plan, but um, it, it seems we have the funds for it and it seems like an appropriate thing. So this, this is a plan, and I think it's really appropriate for you to talk to the various department heads about their specific requests in this plan um, when they're in front of you over the coming month and a half. And, and again, it's our, uh, been our practice for a good number of years now to um, you know, put put the uh, capital uh, plan out early and, and appropriate the money through the ordinances in the uh, first couple meetings of the new year. We get ahead of the curve for um, the, the bidding process, which we usually gives us better numbers and a better schedule, or at least a, hopefully a schedule we want. So. Correct, yes, for the road projects especially, right, Mayor? We want to try to get the work done in the summer. If we don't bid it until June, there are going to be vendors that aren't available or will be paving roads in October, November, which is not optimal. So. Comments or uh, Deb? And then uh, two questions, well, multi part questions. On one of them, and I don't remember which one it was, it talks about that the MRC solar carport is going to be cash flow positive, but how long is it going to be not cash flow positive, if any? Um, and are we borrowing it, paying for it? Do we know quite yet exactly how? I know we're applying for grants and that sort of thing. That's going to be a, a big conversation to have potentially as soon as the next council meeting. I need to sneak that one or add that one on there, but I can give you a primer to what it is. We're looking at it being a $2 million project of which $800,000 would come from the federal government in an ITC grant if you're a, a like Tom's business, when Tom put solar panels on Lanka roof, uh, on Lanka's warehouse, he was able to um, uh, receive a tax credit because it's a company. We don't pay taxes so we can't benefit from a tax credit. So the government in the Inflation Reduction Act said, well, for governments, for not-for-profits that can't take advantage of a tax credit, we will actually pay you the dollar amount. So they have not um, propagated the rules on that. We were talking to representatives from Mikey Sherrill's office last week to try to find out who in the IRS and, and the Treasury to talk to about it. That's an inflection point for us. If we don't know that process and feel comfortable with that process, we're not going to advance the, um, the bid and advance the project until then. But we are close in moving that project forward. I'm going to be meeting with the planning board, with mayor and councilman range um, in a, on January 17th to present it to the planning board for master plan um, compliance, that it, that it kind of fits within the master plan. And uh, so it'll be in front of the, that project will be in front of the planning board and we'll get through that process, that, that step. But then from there, we're going to need to do um, a, lot of, a lot of items. We're going to have to change ordinances to allow for uh, larger solar. We're going to have to create uh, the 
or the borough code to permit net metering. And I don't want to get too far into this. I'm just throwing these out there as terms so you know that it's coming. I'm going to have to have a presentation that really explains it all. But when it comes to the funding, 800,000 will be that grants payable. You know, Thomas pointed out the grants payable. Sorry, Thomas pointed out the grants payable for the for the uh, playground. We haven't gotten that money in yet. That's why it's not showing as an inflow, but we know it's there to help pay for the project. Um, same situation with this. The $800,000 would be in a, a grant account payable that we would have that we would use, and we've done that before. We would draw down on that grant, those grant funds, and then uh, we will have the borough um, internally loan the project money. If we go out and actually bond for it, we will lose the amount of investment tax credit grant that we can get. And we want to get the full 800000 If it's $2 million and we can get $800,000, I want to get the $800,000. Um, as another kind of uh, a primer, the, there's two main, three main cash flows from that project. 800000 for the ITC federal grant, about $1.5 over the course of 15 years for the SREX. So those two alone we've paid for, right? 800,000, 1.5 million, 2.3 million, and the project only costs us 2 million. And that's not even taking into account the electricity that we're gonna be generating from this that's gonna be reducing municipal electric bills. And that's how it will work. It will reduce municipal electric bills. It will be behind the meter of this building, of public safety, of well A, some of the other larger um, consuming meters. So, um, that's a really, I, hope, I don't know, it's kind of like, you know, at least maybe you can wrap your mind around that, but there'll be a lot more to come on, on that. All right, I think this one's a little easier. easier. <laughs> um, it talks about the Central Avenue sidewalks, and I'm assuming that's not the new sidewalk that was just put in from Ridgedale to Fairview. Correct. We did some minor repairs along the way because I know it's a sidewalk you and others walk on a lot. So we did some spot repairs. We did a major section that um, will do about half of the remaining, but that's out in 2027. So um, if we can accelerate that, we, we monitor all these projects and you might see something move from 2024 to 2026 because the road's really not that bad. But boy, we've got to move this sidewalk project up. So that often happens during this process, but it's out there and it's on the list and people can see that it's coming. All right. We'll have to talk about it being in, not until 2027 because that sidewalk's a mess. Okay. That's it. Okay. Thanks, Mary. Okay. Thanks, Mary. Jim, thanks so much. That's a, you know, it's a great plan that you put together with the rest of the department heads. So on, on the, the, um, the engineering, Bob Vogel, uh, five-year capital plan on the bottom, you have a bunch of grant money, over a million dollars. But this is all for projects that have been completed, except that you're waiting to get. You see all that on the bottom? Mm -hmm. It's funded, yep. county yep. roads. Yep, it's all sorts of documentation we have to submit. Bob Vogel's chasing it. We, we uh, are, are constantly reminding him to get the information in. Glen Wild was delayed because we had an issue with closing that out um, because of some issues with the contractor and what they had done, so we couldn't close that out. We have to close it out and be done and then say, can you, it's done, can you give us our money? Um, and, um, and same with the other ones. It's a matter of submitting the information. Um, the Green Avenue pedestrian is probably the bump outs. And uh, they're for 191,800. We haven't even started that project yet. We just recently appropriated it. Waverly Place, we've got money in, in place, but as we talked about, that's not going to happen until 2024. It's been w awarded. And uh, the 2023 million overlay for $250,000 um is uh, we'll, we'll be able to submit that because we will finish that up quickly at the end of this year but those are all funds tom that we will um that we will receive and then they will go to replenish right. the general capital fund so if the project costs us a million dollars we appropriated a million but then two hundred fifty thousand dollars comes back in to the general capital fund and uh is available for future projects right so are any of these projects that are on your your future five-year capital plan, do they uh, qualify for any? Yes, Waver the Waverly and the Mill and Overlay for this year. Waverly is already here on the bottom. Yep, and the Mill and Overlay for 2023. And we so typically you apply for one every year. This was the first year we applied for Mill and Overlay. I'm looking at Ray. Did we actually get awarded on that? Or 
200,000. So I'm going to correct that, Bob Vogel. Um, and uh, so that's been awarded to us already, but it's basically one bite at the apple a year. So every year we're going to submit for something. We look for a major arterial road, but now that they're doing milling and overlay, if they're willing to give us money every year for milling and overlay, we're doing milling and overlay all the time. So Okay. And the other comment I have, which is uh, I think is great for the bro, is on the public works, we are buying an all-electric zero-turn mower. That so is I correct. I think that's going to be a great contribution. I mean, it falls in line correct. with... Correct. So that's page seven. Page seven. And uh, I know Rachel and the Climate Action Group and Peter Freed have been uh, strong advocates for this. And Ken O'Brien has been looking at all the different available equipment. And it's, it's really coming up fast, right? I was over at uh, um, the Ace Hardware over on Shunpike, off Shunpike, and they now have th their electric lawnmowers, Ego lawnmowers are sitting right there. So it's really something that's, I mean, back in the 70s, I used to have an electric lawnmower with a cord. <laughs> so it's really, it's really changed it a lot. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. <laughs> so that's the truth. So uh, you had to be very precise in how you cut it. So um, in any event, so we're, yeah, we're, we're looking into those types of situations where we can, um, a, a, obtain that type of equipment. Um, it'll be our first one and we'll see how it goes. It is kind of a first generation thing, but we're hopeful that Ken, Ken's actually seen it, met with the manufacturer, tested it, and is comfortable with advancing it. That's great. And then how about the Jeep? We can't get an electric Jeep? So we need uh, to replace the Jeep now? We do. We do. The vehicles that we have, including the vehicle that's on the ordinance, um, ordinance for appropriation this evening, was actually something that we appropriated last year and then the um, Ford. Uh, the the contract said sorry the price went up at the end of the year and voided voided our order um, because of price price inflation with everything so the vehicles that we buy when uh, they uh, like a Jeep they're outfitted with a plow the vehicle that's on for this evening the electric utility vehicle if you look at it it says six thousand six hundred dollars for the plow because we you need to have vehicles that plow the roads. Um, when uh, the Climate Action Group is going to come together and give a presentation, they're going to talk about the light duty vehicles, whether it's Bob Vogel's vehicle, Jim Trimble's vehicle, uh, other vehicles like that that can be replaced as electric, Cindy's um, uh, the parking enforcement vehicle is yeah. is out there as was announced today so so we're out there we're doing it. It's just we can't buy a vehicle that uh, like a Rivian truck or a Ford F-150 Lightning or anything like that that's a fully electric vehicle, they're not warranted or um, the manufacturers don't say that they can be plowed. And my guess is because the electric batteries are integrated within the chassis and the chassis get banged around pretty well. So there is a demand for this and I think we'll be seeing it down the road. But right now, it would require us to have almost what I would say is two fleets, a fleet that plows because we need the plow, and then um, other vehicles. So what we would say here is uh, buy the Jeep, but then if in two or three years that vehicle is now available, well, we can sell the Jeep and buy that new vehicle. So, But we need the Jeep, and we need that electric utility uh, vehicle that's under ordinance right now this evening because we just need to get the work done. Yeah, New York City is facing so they, they made a commitment to go electric with garbage trucks. They can actually pick up the garbage with electric garbage trucks, except for the garbage trucks also plow. So it's been postponed for indefinitely because they, they can't plow with electric garbage trucks. So, uh, Bob? It's actually already been appropriated. So the funds are already appropriated. We're getting equipment in and we're working on it. It is a huge project, a $2 million project that's being funded by multiple electric utility, water utility, general capital, and ARPA funds. So um, that's, that's already in the works. Any other questions or comments? Thank you, Jim. Yes, sir. All right, now we're on to our second of uh, invitations for public comment. This is when you may comment on any topic. Uh, if you want to comment, please step up to lectern, state your name and address, write the same on the clipboard. Try to keep your comments to three minutes, but we give you a one-minute grace and we'll stop you at four. Anyone wishing to comment, please step forward.
Hi, everybody. Sue Heffernan, Beverly Road. I'm representing the Madison Residents Coalition and the 952 petition signatures that are opposed to any cannabis dispensary in Madison. So I just wanted to say we are here to make sure that the council follows through with revoking the cannabis ordinances on tonight's agenda, specifically the ordinances 1, 2, and 3, which revoke the 2022 ordinances numbered 15, 18, and 39. Uh, we're committed to reversing these ordinances so that no other applicants or any other cannabis sites become available in Madison at any time in the future. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Sir. Anyone else wishing to comment? Please step forward. Seeing none, I close this part of the meeting. And we now go out to introduce or ordinances. Will the clerk please read the uh, statement? Ordinances scheduled for first reading have a hearing date set for January the 23rd, 2023. All will be published in the Madison Eagle, posted on the bulletin board, and made available to members of the public requesting. And just, uh, we often do this with the uh, hearings for uh, capital expenditures that we will group the um, or ordinances based on the, the funding source. For example, when we, two weeks from now, the uh, hearing for any general capital will hear all the ordinances at the same time. So you can comment on multiple ordinances at once. All the other ordinances will have uh, <coughs> So I call up ordinances for first reading. I ask the borough clerk to read said ordinances by title. Ordinance 1-2023. Ordinance of the Borough of Madison repealing Ordinance 15-2022 to remove Chapter 193 entitled Medicinal Cannabis Dispensary. Mayor, I move uh, Ordinance 1-2023. Second. Council discussion? I think our public comment covered it well, so. Okay, roll call vote, please. Mr. Hoover? Yes. Ms. Cohen? Yes. Ms. Ehrlich? Yes. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mr. Range? Yes. Mr. Harlan Poudis? Yes. Ordinance 2 2023. <clears throat> ordinance of the Borough of Madison repealing Ordinance 18 2022 to reinstate the former zone of the CC community commercial zone and the gateway zone prohibiting municipal cannab medicinal cannabis dispensaries. Mayor, I move ordinance 2-2023. Second. Any council discussion? We'll call a vote, please. Mr. Hoover? Yes. Ms. Cohen? Yes. Ms. Ehrlich? Yes. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Ms. Rain? Mr. Range, sorry. Yes. <laughs> Mr. Harlan Poudis. Late hour. Yes. <laughs> And new water and all that. Yes, yes, my fault. Ordinance 3 2023. Ordinance of the Borough of Madison repealing ordinance number 39 2022 to remove medicinal cannabis dispensary permit application. Mayor, I move ordinance 3 2023. Second. Any council discussion? Tom? So I just want to comment, Mayor. Uh, I was only a spectator at the time of this. I was, uh, you know, very. Uh, just cautious about which way direction we're going. I was here in April when we, last April, when we actually approved the medical marijuana dispensary uh, permits. Uh, there wasn't a lot of public attention at the time. Unfortunately, there, there is times when things get done in the borough and the community is not paying attention that they don't always have to. But I, I, I want to comment that I was very impressed with the residents' uh, participation this time to come out and speak publicly how you all felt you organized very well uh, the second meeting was a little more professional than the first meeting but I understood the passion that everybody had to discuss this uh, change in something that would uh, bring a new potential lifestyle to the borough that we're not ready for so m my primary comment is that it's good that the council reacted from as a spectator at the time and I also hope that the community continues to pay attention to what's going on with borough business in general. Important things like this, and there's going to be a lot of other changes moving forward that will, you know, affect our community, hopefully for the best. The council always has the best intentions for the community, but it's great for them to hear what residents really feel. And the residents were very professional. I was very impressed with the resources that they brought to discuss why this might not be the best um, type of service for the borough to implement. So uh, that, that's it. I don't have any other comments, Mayor. Thank you. Any other comments? Okay, roll call vote, please. Mr. Hoover? Yes. Ms. Cohen? Yes. Ms. Ehrlich? Yes. 
Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mr. Range? Yes. Mr. Harlan Pudis? Yes. Okay, Ordinance 4-2023. Ordinance of the Borough of Madison appropriating $300,000 from the Electric Capital Improvement Fund for the water and light plant roof replacement. Mayor, I move Ordinance 4-2023. Second. Tom, a second. Tom? Second. Yep, very, thank you. Mm -hmm. And uh, just to, again to reinforce the, the <laughs> most of the rest of these ordinances, or almost all these ordinances, are funding um, on. Um, capital uh, th projects that are part of the budget that was just presented. Any further council discussion? Yeah, Rachel. Um, I'm pleased to see that we're introducing this ordinance to repair the roof of uh, the water and light plant. This is uh, basically um, paving the way to move forward with uh, the balance of the phase one uh, solar installations because uh, we would want to move to repair and replace portions of the roof before we install anything on top of that. So this is uh, an exciting and, uh, frankly, uh, much needed ordinance to make repairs to the roof. So we need to do that in any case, but there's a greater purpose that um, I think we, uh, you know, in our, the, the council has been following along with the presentations that uh, Jim Burnett and Peter Fried have made. This is a great step in support of those. Thank you. Tom. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I want to comment on ordinance number nine. We'll wait, wait till we, uh, oh, we we're, get just, there? we're just discussing uh, ordinance four right now. Did I jump ahead? You did jump ahead, but in your old role, you were allowed to. Mm -hmm. I did, right? You were allowed <laughs> to time for at the same time, but now. Discussion. Yeah. <laughs> Any other discussion on ordinance four? Okay, roll call vote, please. Mr. Hoover? Yes. Ms. Cohen? Yes. Ms. Ehrlich? Yes. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mr. Rain? Yes. Mr. Harlan Putis? Yes. Okay, Ordinance 5 2023. Oops. Ordinance of the Borough of Madison appropriating $206,000 from the General Capital Improvement Fund for final payments and change orders for the Hartley Dodge Memorial, Memorial Plaza reconstruction work. Mayor, I move Ordinance 5 2023. Second. Council discussion, as stated, this closes out the uh, plaza work that was uh, um, he heavily funded through um, grants. Roll call vote, please. Mr. Hoover? Yes. Ms. Cohen? Yes. Ms. Herlick? Yes. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mr. Range? Yes. Mr. Harlan Pudis? Yes. Ordinance 6 2023. Ordinance of the Borough of Madison appropriating $40,000 from the General Capital Improvement Fund for the Memorial Park footbridge repair project. Mayor, I move Ordinance 6 2023. Second. Council discussion? Uh, Just real quick, I'm very glad to see this. I know the junior school uses it for cross country practice, and my twins were, what was it, five and six years ago running there, and it wasn't great then, so I'm glad that it's it's being taken care of because it is a used trail and uh, footbridge. Rachel, just to your point, Deb, I'll add that this was a, a special uh, item of attention for the Parks Advisory Committee this year, and and um, they made a special effort to to move this up in terms of uh, getting engineering's focus on it. So it's a great example of volunteers, you know, uh, helping to elevate uh, these these sorts of needed repairs. Any further comments? We'll call vote, please. Mr. Hoover? Yes. Ms. Cohen? Yes. Ms. Ehrlich? Yes. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mr. Range? Yes. Mr. Harlan Pudis? Yes. Okay, Ordinance 7 2023. Ordinance of the Borough of Madison appropriating $464,000 from the General Capital Improvement Fund for the 2023 sewer main lining repair and rehabilitation, rehabilitation construction work. May I move Ordinance 7 2023? Second. Council discussion? Deb? Just a quick comment so people know this is, they line the inside so it helps prevent leakage from the sewer pipes and keeps everything going down so it keeps our costs as low as possible. Yep. Uh, Rachel? I'll just clarify it prevents stormwater from leaking into the sanitary ah. sewer. <laughs> not sewage from leaking out of <laughs> just to be clear but we don't want to send groundwater through our sewage processing because it doesn't recharge the aquifer and it increases our sewer costs so 
this is a way that we uh, improve our sewage system uh, while reducing, you know, needless sewage processing and recharging the aquifer. Thank you. Clarification. <laughs> Roll call vote, please. Mr. Hoover? Yes. Ms. Cohen? Yes. Ms. Ehrlich? Yes. <clears throat> Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mr. Range? Yes. Mr. Harold Lampoutis? Yes. Ordinance 8 2023. Ordinance of the Borough of Madison appropriating $750,000 from the General Capital Improvement Fund for the 2023 mill and overlay resurfacing projects. Mayor, I move Ordinance 8 2023. Second. Any council discussion? So, what, what roads are these? That's what was on Jim's? Yeah, that was on Jim's. Yeah, so that's the, uh, the, the mill and overlay section, uh, which is the page after reconstruction. Including Garf, yep. Oh, that's a big road. All right, any other further discussion? Roll call vote, please. Mr. Hoover? Yes. Ms. Cohen? Yes. Ms. Herlich? Yes. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mr. Range? Yes. Mr. Harold Lampoutis? Yes. And Ordinance 9. That's 2023. Ordinance of the Borough of Madison appropriating $240,000 from the Open Space Recreation and Historic Preservation Trust Fund for the MRC Basketball Pickleball Court construction project. May I move Ordinance 9 2023? Second. Council discussion. Tom? And, or let's go with Bob first and then Tom. Okay. <laughs> yeah. um, I'm very happy to see this moving along. I've been the liaison to REC for over, a little over a year now. And I will say that a lot of work has gone in to this by a lot of people, not only to design the court, but do it in a way that impacts the environment the least. Uh, studies have been done to see which trees would be affected, and we want to maintain those trees which are considered important. You know, uh, there are certain trees that are more, like their ash trees are going to come down, but others will stay. I know there was a lot of discussion about uh, the water runoff that's been addressed uh, it's really a credit to all those who have taken part in this project thank you and Tom yeah so mayor let's just make sure the community knows that this is a public-private partnership there's going to be donations from the Madison Madison Basketball, Basketball Association, Association. Yep. M MBA MBA uh, so there was a lot of involvement from the community and then the borough stepped up and the various committees, open space, uh, environmental, and then our CFO, Jim Burnett, played a big role. The mayor, Bob, like he said, as a liaison, made it happen. And it's, it's a, an activity that I would imagine everybody has heard about and probably a lot of us have participated in it. So it's a nice adult recreation activity for the borough to offer the community. We don't have that many adult recreation activities now besides walking and maybe if you're a skater you might play some soccer but this is really going to be put to good use and it's going to be next to the bas the tennis courts at the high school so when it's appropriate there'll be a nice combination facility there for for our madison community to use and and i'm, I'm sure it's going to be much appreciated by everybody so thanks for everybody making it happen i'm sure you're going to get some thanks from the community too mayor yes example of a great team effort any other comments? Roll call vote, please. Mr. Hoover? Yes. Ms. Cohen? Yes. Ms. Ehrlich? Yes. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mr. Range? Yes. Mr. Harlem Poudis? Yes. Ordinance 10 2023. An ordinance of the Borough of Madison amending Chapter 16 Environmental Commission to add non voting associate members and student members to the Environmental Commission. Mayor, I move Ordinance 10 2023. Second. Uh, council comment this is modeled after uh, Morris Township ordinance and um, again is just trying to expand the um, the activities of the Environmental Commission and bringing some more volunteers to support the great work we'll call vote please mr. Hoover yes Ms. Cohen yes Ms. Ehrlich yes mr. Landrigan yes mr. range yes mr. Harlan Poudis yes Ordinance 11-2023. Ordinance of the Borough of Madison appropriating $21,000 from the General Capital Improvement Fund for the purchase of a Lucas chest compression system. Mayor, I move Ordinance 11-2023. I second the ordinance. 
and Jim Burnett to describe this uh, piece of apparatus, which would be very important. Any further discussion? Roll call vote, please. Mr. Hoover? Yes. Ms. Cohen? Yes. Ms. Ehrlich? Yes. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mr. Range? Yes. Mr. Harlan Poudis? Yes. Ordinance 12 2023. Ordinance of the Borough of Madison appropriating $650,000 from the General Capital Improvement Fund for the 2023 Cook Avenue lot reconstruction project. May I move Ordinance 12 2023? Second. Council discussion? I'm going to make the same comment, for, well, make the comment once, but it's for 12 and 13. I'm very excited that this is happening. This was presented first in the beginning of 2022. Um, uh, you're probably being, probably early, yeah, I think it was earlier than, yeah. Or earlier than that. Yeah, before that. Um, <laughs> but the nice thing is it'll make the, it'll make it easier to, get in and out and it's clear where the parking is going to be um, and I think it's a lot safer based on the designs I've seen so it's been a road I know we've had to fight with the utilities and all that but I'm glad it's gonna happen this summer other comments Rachel yeah I'll just add that uh, you know the, the utilities right now we have a lot of wires crisscrossing the Cook Avenue parking lot those will all be buried and be underground so there'll be a nice clear unobstructed space there'll be more trees um, there'll be uh, green infrastructure to help uh, infiltrate stormwater back into the ground instead of putting it into the storm system there'll be more uh, parking spaces I believe and we'll be um, providing more of those spaces for shoppers so there'll be um, the historic lampposts will be used there'll be bike racks so it's going to be a really inviting attractive kind of uh, arrival point for visitors uh, and residents who are parking in town to shop so this will be a fabulous project it'll be maybe a little painful while it's phased because the parking lot will be reconstructed in two parts so that not all the parking is taken away at once um, but I share Deb's enthusiasm that this is going forward because I think it'll be a real showpiece for us despite it being a parking lot. <laughs> As a slight correction, we, we will lose a few parking spots. Oh, I thought we, with the striping, we were managing to keep them all. No. Um, I, I don't think, yeah, because <laughs> if anyone that parks there right now knows they're not properly striped right yeah, now. It's yeah. almost, almost as bad as what the community pool used to be that, um, <laughs> you know, if, if you have a moon roof, you can park in some of the spots because you can climb out to the top. But, um, you know, I, I, but we are working with, um, we hope to have a uh, formal announcement soon about a, uh, an agreement that will, um, negate any loss of parking by uh, providing parking close by for merchants. Thanks for clarifying. John, you had... Uh, Rachel said it all. Uh, it's it's going to be environmentally sensitive, which is another great benefit to doing that. And it is our, it is our centerpiece parking lot, which <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> doesn't look like it right now. No, it will be. Yep. All right. Roll call vote, please. Mr. Hoover? Yes. Ms. Cohen? Yes. Ms. Ehrlich? Yes. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mr. Range? Yes. Mr. Harlan Poudis? Yes. And Ordinance 13 2023. Ordinance of the Board of Madison <coughs> appropriating $150,000 from the Electric Capital Improvement Fund for the 2023 Cook Avenue parking lot reconstruction project. Mayor, I move Ordinance 13 2023. Second. And this is in two separate appropriations because this is related to the electrical work, which not only includes the burying of the uh, cabling that uh, Rachel already, already mentioned, but um, new transformers. I don't know if you, had, you might have mentioned that too. And, but so that's where that's why it's two separate uh, appropriations. Any further discussion? One, one quick comment, Mayor. I hope that we can actually uh, get the merchants and other people who are using the lot now who maybe can be in a different spot to move so that we can make more room for the shoppers and visitors who we want to attract yep. to that town because that is a big big purpose of that lot is to know you can go there and hopefully find a spot quickly when you want to shop in town yeah it's um one of my pet peeves in town is come shop madison and you pull in a parking lot oh permit permit required for these spots 22 spots yep. um so uh, that's a, a key thing uh also for the um Merchants that may be watching at home, we, we will be scheduling a meeting shortly to go over the um, project in detail. Once again, they did see the uh, layout, but uh, most in particular, as Rachel mentioned, the fact that we have to um, 
phase the construction so they have an understanding of how that works, how we will protect access to their businesses during the whole construction. Um, it's not going to be an easy one. The plan is to do it July and August when uh, downtown is fairly quiet. Any further discussion? Roll call vote, please. Mr. Hoover? Yes. Ms. Cohen? Yes. Ms. Herlich? Yes. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mr. Range? Yes. Mr. Harlan Pudis? Yes. All right, consent agenda res resolutions. Will the clerk please read the statement? Consent agenda resolutions will be enacted with a single motion. Any resolution requiring expenditure is supported by a certification of availability of funds. Any resolution requiring discussion will be removed from the consent agenda. All resolutions will be reflected in full in the minutes. May I move uh, agenda resolutions R37-2023? to R50-2023. Second. Any uh, discussion or any that need to be pulled? For those that missed the reorganization meeting, the reason we start at 37 is the first 36 of the year we're all done on Friday. Um, Busy night. Roll call vote, please. Mr. Hoover? Yes. Ms. Cohen? Yes. Ms. Ehrlich? Yes. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mr. Range? Yes. Mr. Harlan Pudis? Yes. There is no unfinished business, and as noted before in uh, Deb's report, we have no vouchers or approved because it's the first meeting of the year. Under new business, uh, we had a, uh, an appointment that slipped off the reorganization uh, agenda, so I want to appoint uh, Peter Woolley as a higher ed member uh, to the Downtown Development Commission for a term expiring 12-31-2025. Can I have a uh, motion? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And uh, Tom, we'd like to make a motion to adjourn. Uh, make a motion to adjourn, Mayor. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you all.